The Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. national holiday is usually observed and celebrated with service and reflection. This year, many events had to go virtual because of the pandemic, including a powerful conversation by the nonprofit organization 100 Black Men of New York. Today, required New York City Democratic Congressman Charlie Rankle. He served 46 years in Congress. He reflected on how far we've come since the civil rights movement and the long road ahead. Take a listen. Well, first of all, I want to thank the 100 black men for its continuity of spirit. You know, when we started the 100 black men, like so many other experiences, you hope and you dream that it would have enough credibility that not a hundred, but tens of thousands of people all over will have something that they can be associated with as a network of ideas and search for the freedom that was really never contemplated when they had written the, uh, the Constitution. And being 90 years old, I can only say that I just welcome talking to young people because where we go from here is going to depend entirely on our solidarity, our helping each other. And as my late brother, Dave Dinkins once said, standing on each other's shoulders. One of the stories that I seldom tell is that after I got discharged from the army in 1952, I went to get a job and I came home with a lot of medals, but I had never finished high school. And I found myself right back in the garment center pushing a truck and I went to the VA and I just said, I need some help. That's a story by itself. But I did go back to high school and ultimate law school. And uh, I met this guy, Percy Sutton. And Percy coming from Texas has spent a lot of time with the Freedom Riders and going down south. Well, I thought, I had seen enough combat and I just wasn't looking to have white folks beating up on me. And I said, Percy, I understand that you want me to go down uh, to participate in this 54 mile march from Selma Montgomery to, from Selma to Montgomery. But quite frankly, I am not up to it and I got bad feet and I just, I've done all of my marching. He said, but they're asking for you. I said, Percy, they don't even know me. They said, no, they know your title and they want you down there. Could you just go down and take pictures before the march and then you can come back? Well, my ego and political ambitions allowed me to say, yes, I got a round trip ticket from then Idlewild Airport and I flew down there and Dr. King was there, Dr. Bunch, Andy uh, Young, and, and John Lewis, and we took these pictures. I had my round trip ticket in my pocket. I was fairly sharp at the time. I had my stingy brim on. I had my sharp suit on. I had my floor shine shoes, and I looked pretty good for a darn picture. And, uh, Hundreds of people were lined up and it started to rain. And the old folks, instead of running for shelter, actually was running in their packages for plastic to cover up their shoes. And when they started to march, I had my ticket in my pocket. I was looking around seeing where in the hell could I get a taxi? or get out of here, the television cameras had gone. And I figured I had done my political thing. Well, the truth of the matter is by the time I was too ashamed to 
to go anywhere. And before I knew it, we were marching in the woods, no cameras, no lights, no cabs, no nothing. And here I am with my cashmere overcoat on and floor sham shoes in the woods, marching, wondering what the hell is going on here. And I tell you, I marched for five days, the 54 miles, and I cussed every step of the way, wondering how did I get sucked into this thing. I tell this cruel story as an example of my ignorance of my youth and not appreciating the fact that these people had been suffering this long before I was born. And they were just asking people to participate in order to get the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act passed after Bloody Sunday had whipped so many of them and tortured so many of them. And I ended up at the end of the march and I asked John Lewis, who had really put his life on the line. I said, John, I've been in combat, I've seen heroes, but you guys are something that I just don't understand. Not too long after that, I heard a Southerner named Lyndon Johnson give a speech and say that we shall overcome. It never entered my mind that a Southerner, much less a president like Lyndon, would be saying those words. And after that, both of the bills were passed and I might throw in with Dirksen, a Republican's assistant in the Congress. And that's why we have to be as a people to remember that we have, sh should have no permanent interest in a party, but permanent interest in the goals that we would want to achieve as a people. And as a result of that, so many African Americans in the South, they registered, they voted. I was able to join nine other black members of Congress. And the 13 of us were able to form the Congressional Black Caucus. And at first there were 13, then 26, then 30, then Today, there are over 50 African Americans in the Congress, over 20 Hispanics. We have an African American vice president. And in our state, our legislative bodies in the Assembly and in the Senate are African Americans. Most of our Democratic county leaders are Black. I say this young people because we've come a long way from slavery, standing on other people's shoulders. And now it's your shoulders that young people have to stand on. One of the greatest things that human beings need in order to succeed is self-esteem. And being associated with the 100 black men with successful people that they can touch and talk with, with mentors that are anxious to help and knowing that it's not just a Harlem thing or a New York City thing, but a national thing has brought a sense of networking that unfortunately slavery and reconstruction had stolen from us as a people but we're getting it back. And the reason I spend so much time trying to support the 100 black men is because you've always had your dawn meetings when I had to be in Washington and we didn't have this virtuous way of communicating. But Courtney, I just wanna to say to the young people who've joined under your leadership, 
and what has been done by Mike Gardner and so many others is only planting seeds for our future. You can't expect much that a country that was built on taking land away from natives here that was bothering nobody, a country that was built on the fact that they were going to get slaves and free labor. But I'm telling you, there was one clause in there that said, in order to perfect a more perfect union. Well, I'll tell you one thing, you guys and people all over this world of color are showing, especially those two Senate seats in Georgia, getting the majority for Democrats, having Camilla there as vice president. We are a long way from having a perfect union, but thanks to you guys, we're getting there. And I appreciate so much the opportunity to share this old timers views.